Hello my soccer universe, what a final that was and whenever the Europa League anthem is played I told you in my preview, never bet against Sevilla even if there are so many things pointing towards the other team, there's something special about that. Um, although for a sec there I really thought maybe we'll see another uh, finally an Italian win again, it has been a while. But, you know, some statistics just prove to be true. Spanish teams against non-European opposition are unbeaten since 2001. I wonder when this is gonna change. Let's go to the game. Uh, it started brightly uh, with for Inter, who got a really nice uh, ball onto Lukaku, who runs in his typically man-mountain fashion into the into box. Diego Carlos is on his heels and you know, tries everything to hold, hold him back, but in the end he trips him on the heel in the penalty box, very clearly so, and it is already very early a penalty. Now, uh, I think that yellow card that he, he, he then got was a little bit contentious because there could be an arg arg argument made. Uh, it was a red card, a red card foul, so um, the referee Part of why this final was good is that the referee let things slide, but I'm not sure if this was the best decision there. Um, but it was a clear penalty and Diego Carlos goes for the triple. He it was a penalty he gave away in the quarters that was saved, then a penalty uh, given away in the semis and now a penalty given in the final. I heard someone calls it as a David Luiz hat trick and not even he has done that. Uh, Lukaku steps up and converts. Uh, it, the goalie was there, but converts nicely. Now, uh, while talking about game, I also need to talk briefly about the matchup. I'm. It was not the hardest matchup to guess, but I'm very, very happy that I got the matchup. Uh, I'm always happy when I get the matchup right. It was clear that Sevilla will play in white with black uh, socks. That's forced Inter into white socks, but yeah. Uh, look, look a little, little bit weird. I really, as I said, I don't quite get why Sevilla is playing with black socks. I know it's a traditional look, uh, but I think all white against uh, the Inter would have uh, worn black, black socks. Yeah, I actually thought that since Inter was also wearing the, in the Champions League final in 2010, they were wearing white socks. I thought this might have been an omen. No, you know, never got this. So I thought at this point Inter is well on, on its way. This really swings the pendulum towards Inter. However, um, their defending was also not that great, and this was a little, a little bit, a bit surprising. And the typical Sevilla move, Sevilla took a little bit, but uh, then with their weaving play and 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 so on the ball goes outside to Navas, who puts a nice cross in. And yeah, if you forget Luc de Jong uh, in the box, a defender should be ahead of the striker, not whatever. He from a short distance had it in. Yes, uh, Handanovic was also there with his hand. Uh, since it was such a fast header, I am willing to let it go, but I always remember what Oliver Kahn uh, once said. If the hand is on the ball, it should be a goal. And yeah, whatever. Uh, from that moment on, I mean, it was a great start to the final. And from that moment on, it, it was a very uh, intense uh, game that uh, where both teams tried to go forward. But I had always the feeling that Sevilla is getting more and more into, into the game. They're controlling more and more of the ball. They're playing around uh, and, and, and so on. Uh, really, in a way, uh, pulling it to Inter more than Inter was trying more on the counter-attack. And I have to say, I was a little bit disappointed in that case but you know on the other side when you see uh, what happened in the semis it also did not come as a huge surprise because Inter they are set deep but uh, Sevilla clearly has a little bit more of a quality uh, in that game and then it was a free kick by Eva Banega oh, way out on the right side long free kick that hits a tour into the box that hits Luc de Jong uh, on the head and he really won the one one take one and it goes like a um, nice parabola into the net behind Handanovic. Again, um, if Gagliardini is at his defender, I don't think this is going to happen. But uh, Luc de Jong steals himself away and becomes the early hero of that final. Uh, no one expected Luc de Jong to do anything. 
uh, as, as we, I mean, he, he, he was at the point of ridicule and now he scored the winner against United and two goals in the final against Inter. However, it was not to last long because Brozovic also got a similar position to Banega, a little bit uh, closer, I think, to goal. He got also a free, free kick that hits Godin on the head. Um, that one I thought was more like, yeah, you, you probably can defend uh, it also, but you know, if God, if Godin out jumps you, I'm I'm all right with letting that one go, and it's two two um, in a very highly entertaining game at the half. But as always, if there's one game, and I think the problem was that it was two two, the game I think would have remained and entertaining if there was a lead. But this draw kind of threw everyone back and especially you know the teams neutralized themselves but i again have to say inter was definitely more on the uh, sitting back side not having control of, of the of the midfield i think uh the guys around eva banega and ocampus and especially on the sides for inter they uh they were always holding back they were, they were afraid was what ocampus and navas can do to you and i found that a little a little bit odd. this was not a very self-assured inter I also found it interesting the body language of Conte, who in the first half was fully out there, and in the second half he was kind of subdued. Yes, he got a yellow card, but I found him a little bit subdued uh, overall. As I said, stalemate. I was actually we, uh, I was watching uh, with uh, friends. We we were visiting their house. The kids playing around, so uh, it's maybe not the most ideal, but you know the game was entertaining enough. And we were kind of looking, yeah, it's kind of the game is a little bit slowing down too much. Uh, da, 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 da. And then in the 65th minute, suddenly Lukaku runs free on goal. And at first I thought it was offside. And yes, it would have been offside if he wouldn't have started in his own half. So a uh, pretty big chance there. And you really think this is a must convert. And he was aiming flat for the goal and the goalie just had to put his foot out. Yes, it was a good save, uh, but I feel if he puts a little bit of lift on that ball, that's a goal. I, you, you have to think that this is a goal. This is a little bit maybe the one thing that you, uh, where you have to blame Lukaku. I think I'm really coming around to like Lukaku a lot. I think he's a great player. He's a great personality. He's this gentle giant uh, who is actually also quite a smart uh, um, guy in itself. The one thing is his finishing is great, but some, some, sometimes I think he is more bullish than uh, using the technique that he undoubtedly has and uh, that you have to blame him for then uh, Ocampos comes off he was actually all already wobbling for a while and Muni El Haddadi comes on uh, not saying this changed the game a lot but this was the first uh, change in the teams in the 71st minute it was Sevilla and then Lukaku became the tragic hero again uh, free kick from the right side that seeming at first is cleared but suddenly there are a few severe defenders clear and it is Diego Carlos who suddenly wants to try a, bi to try a bicycle kick. Uh, a great skill, it was maybe, maybe not the picture perfect bicycle kick because it was kind, kind of low, low on the ground. Would not have made it to a goal but Lukaku just puts his foot out there and puts it into the net. Uh, I know he wanted to save it. But yeah, he went from hero, fifth minute, to kind of zero in absolutely no time. And you could see it in his demeanor. Because from that moment on, uh, although Conte bringing on Eriksen Sanchez and Victor Moses, um, there wasn't much coming from Inter. They had, uh, I think there was, there were two chances. One where I think Vic, Vic, Victor Moses was just uh, saved off the line by Conde uh, around the 80. Second somewhere there, and then they may in stoppage time there was a header, but I never thought that the result was very much in doubt, and Sevilla played at home quite easily. Uh, I also heard that after the match, Conte made some interesting comments about he has to now reflect whether uh, the family, uh, whether the family can deal with him uh, and in, as being an inter coach and so on kind of sounded a little bit like Kobay, he, he didn't want to commit to it. Um, that's interesting, I have to say. That's definitely in, in, interesting. It may, it may be that Conte could not be Inter coach. They should not go second because of salary. Um, 
in the lead up to the trophy celebration, uh, the players not only celebrated their uh, manager Lopetegui, who also went from went from zero to hero. I mean, I uh, remember a year, a year and a half ago, Lopetegui was done. First of all, he blew up Spain's World World Cup, and then uh, secondly, uh, he was a failure at Real Madrid. That he then got the. Uh, Sevilla job was a little bit of a surprise and he was not very well liked because in Sevilla they're very much España and what Lovelaw Lopetegui did was not good but and he also was you know when they played against Cluj he was close to the sack at Sevilla as well and now he completely turned around and let's see how Sevilla can keep uh, their players uh, but they also not one only play, um, celebrating um, Lopetegui but also Monchi uh, who failed at Roma and is an absolute genius at Sevilla uh, is also one thing that uh, is a little bit odd these days. Um, I'm curious what players will stay with Sevilla. We know that Region belongs to Real Madrid and probably will not stay. We all already know that Eva Banega, and I don't understand, I mean, I understand it from this part, but Eva Banega is going to Saudi Arabia, but maybe this market will help to keep, help keep Sevilla, help Sevilla to keep the squad together, then I get it out. Um, can I quickly say trophy presentation? I'm a stickler for this, but uh, it's, it's seemingly now the norm. You go, you go. Either the captain is the first one, but if the captain is the last one, uh, the players should not touch the cup until the captain lifts it. Then you can have it. Uh, and I don't know why they are botching this celebration so much. I mean, um, have the cup there, the players walk to the podium. Uh, go again, that the captain is the first one to lift the trophy. I don't like all this. This is, um, you know. Navas took the cup, walked, walked, walked. I mean, it's already so high. I mean, he is little, and then he lifted. He lifted up. It looked like an afterthought a little bit. Um, I don't know. I I'm not so happy with trophy celebrations these days anymore. Anyway, I'm happy to hear any of your comments on this game. Uh, just few things that I wanna add now uh, to that. Sevilla wins the sixth. Europa League trophy. Uh, I actually looked at the jersey. Uh, I actually then thought maybe maybe I should get the jersey because you know this is a fake and I don't like it. Um, and yeah, the Sevilla store is only available in XXL, so I'm still thinking about it. And everywhere else, it's either very very expensive or out of stock already. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to think what this means for the Champions League final. You know, we had Liverpool with five go in and win the sixth. Now we have Bayern on five going in. Could win six. Uh, on the other side, is the underdog. PSG is the underdog. Yeah, we'll see. It has no bearings whatsoever. Um, the other thing is, will the Europa League final? I mean, it was a great final, especially the first half. Will it outclass the Champions League final? That remains to be seen. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Leave comments below on what you thought about the game. Uh, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!